Warning. You've reached on the box with great comfort and are now in a biblical truth zone. Place all questions about theology, current events, and evangelism on the box where they'll be weighed against the truth of God's Word. Ready your hearts and minds. You're about to be inspired and equipped to fulfill the Great Commission. Programming to engage in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to another uproarious edition of On the Box with Ray Comfort. Coming to you from the easy chair is yours truly. Sitting at the dean's desk is the audacious Mark Spence. And this is the, ready for it, I'm extroverted Ray, Ray Comfort. <laughs> There he Thanks is. For it. Oh, great to have That's you with funny. us again today. Please send us adjective suggestions. You know, I need help here. So I don't know if we should ask audiences for adjectives yeah. to describe the program. Then I'll have to start describing the beautiful, wonderful, excellent. awesome, excellent <laughs> audience. Great to have you with us again on On the Box. Uh, we are extremely excited. Please send us any questions, suggestions, uh, thoughts to on the box at livingwaters.com. Check us out on onthebox.us for our blog. And we're really excited, Ray. What have we added now to our blog? You want to tell everybody? Oh, all our notes. So if you want to uh, look further into what we discuss here, just go to On The Box, and you'll see all the notes that, are, that uh, Alan has pulled together. Right. And you want to tell them about your blog and what you're doing with that? Yeah, we rolled over uh, whatever the blog was called. Was it called? I don't know what, what it was called. Call? You're always changing the name. <laughs> you expect me to keep up with you and the name changes? It might changes? have been words of comfort or something like that. It's been rolled over to On The Box. So uh, if you go there, you'll automatically find yourself in the box. Yeah, so check it out, tell people about it, and um, log in there, you know? Mm -hmm. you and know. I'm always encouraged to, I called a lady this morning, uh, I called donors up to thank them personally for giving the ministry, and to hear someone say, I watch on the box every day, right. and same at Hunting the Beach, a lot of people come up to me and say they watch it every day, and that's very encouraging. In fact, I'm amazed. It, it, is, <laughs> it is encouraging. You know, I mean, now with the, with the internet technology we have, we get people from all over the world that write in and say mm -hmm. are watching it. So mm -hmm. it's very exciting. Up to 17 now. Right. Not that many, Ray. It's like three or something. All right. Uh, we talked about the question of the week and told you to write in with that. And there'd be a winner. But we have something kind of unique today. Uh, we're going to call it the compliment of the week. So I want to read this to you guys. We're very excited about it. Uh, hi, Ray, Mark, Easy. We couldn't help but notice you've been mentioning a lot about how you know atheists watch the show. We are a few of those, Ray. I uh, had to email you. While we don't agree at all, myself and about three of my friends tune in every day to watch your show. I've been watching for the past couple of months now. Why? Simply because we have way too much fun watching. And it's interesting, I might add. Contrary to what many people we know think, it's possible to be an atheist and watch on the box. It's like, who doesn't like Ray? Stop. Richard Dawkins doesn't like <laughs> That's Ray. That's true. <laughs> and just for fun, I Googled in, um, I hate Ray Comfort, and a whole stack of stuff came up. So it's very kind of you to put there, but it's not reality. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people hate Ray. Yeah. A lot of people hate Ray. <laughs> a, yeah. Uh, so they go on. It says, uh, we've been getting a lot of guff, have been, calling, have been called names because we watch on the box every day. Well, uh, we'll take that. Uh, we even follow you on Facebook. Maybe we should start a Facebook page called We Watch on the Box with Ray Comfort and We Are Atheists. What do you think? <laughs> this should make your day. We've been inviting others to come view the show, too. I think you've got a whole crowd of atheists who love you, Ray, the four of us being one of those small crowds. You are permanently stuck with us now. Have a marvelous day. Robert, Gabriel, Danielle, and Titus. Isn't that cool? Gabriel and Titus. Bible names, atheists. Right. What are you going to do about to that? Yes. Anyhow, uh, uh, Ray, you love them, don't you? I love atheists. It's a love-hate relationship. Right. I really love them. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll be having uh, lunch with a whole stack of atheists in San Diego coming up. And I think, uh, is it November, October, something like right. that? Yeah. Wonderful. So please keep watching. Keep telling your friends about the program. Continue to write to us. And uh, we're going to be sending the gift, How to Know God Exists. So we'll get that out to you. And uh, if uh, This is to the atheists? Yeah, it does, isn't it, Alan? So we're sending, right. Well, right, we'll send so. four books. Yeah, so we we'll don't want to start yeah, a yeah, fight. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. four we'll books. Four. Ray yeah, I'll get is loved to, and generous. I'll get easy to sign them. All right. Mark Spence, ready for the tool of the day? 
You know that I am there, Emil Zwayne, the ever debonair, good looking. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, you got it. My mind wandered, things. actually, for just a moment. All right, so we have the tool of the day. It's 101 <laughs> of the last day pro uh, prophecies, and it's put out by Eternal Productions. There they are. There's the booklet right there. We offer it through livingwonders.com, but it's filled with 101 of the last day prophecies, but it's also very evangelistic. So you can grab a hold of that tool and hand it to a non believer or a skeptic when it comes to the Word of God. So someone looks at the Bible and says, hey, the Bible is just another book. Well, you can quickly correct them by looking at the prophecies that are found inside the little booklet. So if you got time, you want to pick that up, you want to do so, livingwaters.com. Excellent. Well, we're very excited uh, because we finally, after it seems like hundreds of years of working on season four of The Way of the Master, uh, are at the point where TBN is actually going to debut it. Uh, they're going to launch that on Tuesday, this Tuesday, at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So uh, please be sure to tune into that. Uh, Mark, how did you like uh, being with us in Europe? For season four. Boy, you know, I'll tell you, season four was amazing. I actually am amazed at what uh, Eddie has done with season four in comparison to one through three. So if you are familiar with one through three, your jaw's going to hit the ground when you see season four. I loved it. We had 13 countries in 13 days, always on the go and meeting new people at each time our uh, train had stopped. It's off the hook. It actually is off the chart and there's nothing like it out there. So be amazed. And the reason we went to Europe and preached in 13 countries in 13 days to show that the Bible is uh, the gospel we preach is universal Amen. and the way to present the gospel is universal you don't have to live with the natives or with the Chinese or the Russians for two years to learn their culture and dress like them and speak like them to share the gospel you can do them do it immediately if you've got an interpreter right and you know what you're doing biblically and that that's what, what we did what a journey I mean seriously you know we we have the pictures constantly scrolling in our lobby up on the screen and uh, it's just great to get the memories of that. Uh, we were, <laughs> we started off thinking, oh, this will be no problem. And what was it, day three? We, were we hit dead. the wall. We hit the wall. It's because my whole plan was sleep well and eat healthy. And after four days, we'd had about five hours sleep and we're eating junk food. <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't work. Yeah, the chocolate everywhere Yeah, it we just went. didn't work, and we were exhausted. But we made it through. That was yeah. In a, in a marathon, you hit the wall at a certain point. You just got to press through. Right. And that's what happened. And 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 we ended up with just some wonderful footage. Yeah. And most importantly, the people that were impacted along the way. I mean, the opportunities, preaching the gospel on the trains. I mean, standing in front of the Eiffel Tower, preaching the gospel. Um, you know, right. the Notre Dame Cathedral. Yeah, waiting for um, Hunchback in Notre Dame to uh, come down with his lunch pack. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Ray preached the gospel to the Hunchback. It was just wonderful. <laughs> But I mean, everywhere we went, you know, um, thinking of preaching in front of the, um, uh, the, the Royal Palace in Monaco. Oh, right, um, yes. It was just the Oktoberfest. Oh, that was probably one of the best memories. So anyhow, make sure to check Wonderful. it out. And you can also get the DVDs uh, of the season as well. So look those up on So it's so London. We start with London. We've got that Cockney female that was very foul-mouthed. Right, got Caroline, a, right? Yeah, got a great crowd. and. Uh, who knows what's happened to her? Well, God knows. Let's right. keep her in prayer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, we started in uh, London and we ended in Romania. So, all right. Uh, evidence Bible quote of the day. Hey, this is from Augustine. <laughs> <laughs> we were having a debate today. Is it Augustine? Is it Augustine? Uh, we were going back and forth. So let me, let me read the quote and then uh, maybe we'll hash that out a little more. Uh, I have read Plato and Cicero saying that uh, sayings that are very wise and beautiful, but I never read in either of them, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. You know, that's, we arguing over is how to pronounce his name, uh, and Cicero, or C Cicero, <laughs> <laughs> or Plato, or Plato, that one, that right. Plato? Uh, but those of you who are atheists, listen to what Augustine or Augustine was saying, that he was virtually saying, never a man spoke like this man. If you read your Bibles, you'll see that the uh, Pharisees had temple officers they told to go out and arrest Jesus and the temple officers came back these guards and they said Oops, I thought that was a word temple offices <laughs> <laughs> that's a new word How for do you, you. Pronounce that one? Uh, they came back empty handed and they said why didn't you arrest him and they said this never a man spoke like this man never a man said the things that this man said and and, and C.S. Lewis was true. He said either Jesus was God in the flesh or he was a man who thinks he's a, a fried egg. Right. He said poached, but a lot of Americans don't know what a poached egg is, so I changed it to fried. Um, 
But it's true. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. I'm the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He that has seen me has seen God. He says, I've got power to lay down my body. I've got power to raise it up. Never a man spoke like this man, so you've got to make your mind up. Was he crazy? And his words are not crazy. Amen. They're the most brilliant words ever spoken by a human being. Or was he God manifest in the flesh? And that's, that's what you've got to figure out as an atheist. Right. Absolutely. Well put. And Augustine himself uh, was, uh, he was actually a pretty depraved, uh, wicked sinner. And, um, you know, he came to Christ through a, a radical conversion. So, Mark, what do you, uh, what do you think of uh, Augustine's uh, words there? Well, they're profound. I was actually wanting to throw it back over to you and have you uh, quote that Philip Schaff uh, quote. I don't know if you remember it. It's oh, been yes. a while since you've said it, but, uh, sure. uh, you know, there's nobody like Jesus Christ. In fact, uh, take it away easy. Phil, uh, Philip Schaff, what did he say, yeah, that great Philip historian? Yeah, Philip Schaff, the uh, well-known historian, said, This Jesus of Nazareth, without money and arms, conquered more millions than Alexander, Caesar, Muhammad, and Napoleon. Without science and learning, he shed more light on things human and divine than all scholars and philosophers combined. Without the eloquence of schools, he spoke such words of life as were never spoken before before or since, and produced effects which lie beyond the reach of orator or poet. Without writing a single line, he set more pens in motion and furnished themes for more sermons, orations, discussions, learned volumes, works of art, and songs of praise than the whole army of great men of ancient and modern times. Well, wow, I love never man spoke like and, and if you're impressed by Easy's memory, uh, he's actually memorized the book of Ephesians, Philippians, and all through that. I've, I've memorized the name Ephesians. <laughs> what did you just say, Ray? I forgot. I can't remember. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, that's, that's a powerful, powerful truth. All right, we're going to transition now and talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, uh, it's not pronounced. I um, don't know how to Arnold, it's Arnold. Arnold. And Schwarzenegger. Hey, I don't know. I don't Ray, I'd love to see you as buff as Arnold. That would be my <laughs> what dream. What do you mean? I am. If you swapped your I head once well, on a guy I'm, at uh, Muscle Beach, <laughs> was a big buff guy. Oh, that's right. Yes. That was yeah. cool. I can do an Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, impersonation. Well, everyone knows who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. Uh, obviously, he was uh, the Terminator. He was the governor of California. Uh, and Ray wrote a book called What Hollywood Believes, in which he documents, basically, the beliefs of multiple Hollywood stars. Many of them, right, Ray? You remember some of them? Oh, there? no, I don't remember him. John remember. Wayne. Uh, have you read the book, right? Yeah, I have. It's written in a New Zealand <laughs> accent like Marlis. But, yeah, it was a uh, very fascinating book to write. It took a lot of research because uh, finding quotes from Hollywood stars about God is like looking for hen's teeth. Right. They're just not, hens don't have teeth. They just right. have beaks. So uh, Hollywood and God go together like uh, uh, chalk and cheese. Yeah. They so here's, here's something from the book, and then yeah. I want to kick it over to Mark to comment on this. When asked about his beliefs in God, Arnold Schwarzenegger said, I believe in God, and I believe, therefore, in the opposite, the devil and evil forces. Everyone has their own interpretation of that. Some people think he, uh, some people think the devil, uh, they take the D away from, uh, take the D away and you have evil. Is there something up in the clouds? Probably not. But we as people are much better off if we do believe in good and evil. And I think that last statement in particular, that we're better off we believe in good and evil, is real interesting. And Mark, uh, I think you have some thoughts on that. Well, you know, I think of, he says that we are better off. What does that mean to somebody who doesn't believe in a God up there in the clouds? We are better off. Does that mean we're better off within a society? How do you begin to define society? Because behavior that is acceptable in the gym in the morning is not acceptable at a dinner party at night. What is a society? Is it five people? Is it 100 people? Is it the entire makeup of a country? What is a society? Because if you only had two people left on the face of the earth, a man and a woman, would it be a morally beautiful thing for that man to overtake that woman force his way, rape her, and now begin with society continually now if she doesn't want to have relations with a guy. So if she doesn't want to have relations with a guy, well, is it okay? Is it permissible? I'm reminded of Sam Harris inside of his book. It's entitled Letter to a Christian Nation. He said, if I could wave a magic wand and I could either get rid of religion or rape, I would get rid of religion. That's what he said. That's what the atheist Sam Harris had said. But when you have no authoritative figure, such as God telling us what is right and wrong, good and bad, sacred and secular, then you have every man doing that which is right in his own eyes. So what may be good for you may be evil for me. So we need to have an objective standard for truth. It's the atheistic worldview that says, hey, do whatever it takes to move forward. Let the strong survive. So it may be good to kill away the weaker species, 
according to an atheist. But that's not the Christian worldview. Right. Only the Christian worldview can account for things such as morality. What is good? Well, God declares what is good inside of his word. His commandments are good. They're a light onto our path. They are a beautiful thing that we need within our society. So I would question him, challenge him on that aspect if I could. Right. Well put, Mark. You know, uh, um, Hollywood's had certain rules. If you know anything about the history of Hollywood, if you want to be an actor or a star in Hollywood, you had to, uh, it had to be good looking, uh, had to have a, a good, clear voice, acting ability, and a name that could be remembered. That's why uh, John Wayne's name was changed. His mm. name was Marion someone. Really? Uh, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, that wasn't her real name. It was oh. a very plain Jane name, and they changed the name. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger showed up and smashed that to pieces. <laughs> uh, people couldn't pronounce his name. All I right. mean, spell it, pronounce it, 14 letters, Arnold Schwarzenegger, they did a uh, his, his very clear voice. You are kidding. They couldn't understand what he was talking about. <laughs> Acting ability, if you see his first film, if he's just a terrible actor, right. his first film. I yeah. wouldn't say that now in case I encountered him. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's done, you've done a good job, Arnold. Um, but he just smashed the rules to pieces because of the way he looked. He had a, a, a build like an inverted doorknob. In those days, that before steroids, he just had a tiny waist and just a physique like mine, and was just impressed people. <laughs> and he burst on the Hollywood that was scene. Funny. I wasn't joking. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so it's very interesting. That's so true. And uh, I mean, he's really become an icon mm -hmm. uh, in, in America, and yet uh, he breaks all those stereotypes. Uh, but it's intriguing for us as, as as people. I mean, you know, some of the most viewed. Uh, things on the internet, some of the most viewed talk shows are whenever they're dealing with celebrities. Mm -hmm. uh, people are interested. They want to know their lives. What are they about? You know, what's, what are their beliefs? And it's rare in Hollywood to uh, come across someone who's really a, a sold out, born again believer. Mm -hmm. They're out there. We've seen them. Obviously, Kirk is one mm -hmm. of them. Um, but, uh, but, you know, people are interested. And so as far as Arnold is concerned, he said um, that, you know, his mother used to take him to church when he was younger, but when he was about 18 or 19, uh, he rebelled. And he said, I thought the whole thing was absolutely absurd. When you get older, and especially when you have children, all of a sudden you start thinking back to what your parents taught you and what you rebelled against. And suddenly it makes sense, and you teach it to your kids. In a couple of years, they will rebel. It's the same cycle. And That's in a secular home. Right. You can smash that cycle by biblical principles. And that was my thought. You know, it's, it's a tragedy that I parents, just stole your thought. I know. <laughs> I always tell my thoughts. Now I'm empty-headed. That's nothing new. But, but you know, you, you think about that um, uh, for, the, for the Christian, though, how different that is. Because people sort of reserve, you know, they just kind of reserve themselves to the fact of, oh, uh, you know, that's just the way that it's going to be. And um, resign themselves to the fact that's just right. how it is. My kids are going to turn out. But no, not if, you, not if you truly love God. And, you know, Ray, I've heard you say this often to people um, at, about their children. Uh, you usually ask someone a question if they, if they themselves aren't walking with the Lord. You say, don't you care about your children yeah. and your wife and where they're going to spend eternity right. you know, when you're speaking to a man? Yeah. So, Boy, it's so true. Those of you like an, uh, friendly atheists that are watching, you, know, you, may, you may just think that it's your beliefs, but they're going to reflect on your children and your wife. They're going to they're um, imitate you. Your children imitate you. And imagine if hell is real. And, and God is real, and you're taking them down a path of darkness. And what are you going to say to your kid when your kid comes up to you when he's maybe five or six or seven and says, Daddy, Mommy, am I going to die? Mm. What are you going to say to him? Uh, just don't think about that, son. Just don't think about it. Instead of saying, look, Jesus Christ has abolished death. This is why we die. This is how you can have, have everlasting life and give him that real assurance. But uh, right. So think about your beliefs and, and how you're going to uh, reproduce after your own kind. Yeah. I uh, want to get back to an interesting story with Arnold in a second. But, but before we do that, Mark, um, you know, speaking of Hollywood and celebrities, it has <coughs> such a, an impact on our culture and especially on the young people today. I mean, they basically emulate everything that they see yes. and they basically adopt the worldview that's being uh, promoted through Hollywood. But, but what's your advice to parents who are trying to guard their kids uh, against that influence and keep them with a godly mindset? Well, boy, you know, if we were to go back to one thing that Arnold had said here, he said, uh, you know, it suddenly makes sense that you need to teach your kids correctly, right? He says in a couple of years, they're going to rebel. It becomes the same old cycle because he found himself going back to his parents and apologizing for his behavior. But then he ends up throwing up his hands in the air and says, hey, what's the good on trying to teach your kids anything good and virtuous because they're going to rebel? That's called the law of uniformity to some degree. I mean, he begins to think that the future is going to be like the past, but he can't attest for it. He can't rely upon it. 
You know, the Bible says you train up a child in the way he should go. You raise that child in the way he should go. When he gets older, he's not going to depart from it. Right. So that's what we need to do. When you apply godly principles, you put them into play, your kids are going to turn out just fine, just right. There, there doesn't need to be that rebellion. I remember Ray writing a book, How to Lead Your Children to Christ and Bring Them There uh, and Keep Them There. Um, none of his kids had rebelled, either Jacob, Daniel, or Rachel. You know, all of his kids ended up walking with the Lord. And every night at 6 p.m., Ray had said that he would have family devotions. The kids knew where to meet them, to meet him. You know, we just started going through a logical fallacy book with our kids. We homeschool our five kids. So we're going through uh, logical fallacies. And last night we dealt with red herring. And I wanted my kids. Now my kids age and rage. Uh, rage, rage, rage. And age. <laughs> yeah, but my and problem ages. that I had yesterday, Mark. So From, kids, uh, right? <laughs> 12 years old uh, down to uh, 5 years old. And my five-year-old is getting this, getting right. the whole idea. Hey, you're avoiding the question. Let's stay on task. So I would allow the kids to ask me a question, and I would try to avoid the question, head in another direction, but they were always on top of it. They uh -huh. caught it. We need to teach our kids godly principles. We Amen. need to be able to stay within that realm. And there's no saying on what's going to happen, what kind of warriors are going to be in the hands of God. And when they get older, I can't wait to grab a hold of each one of them as an arrow and shoot them out into a distant future that I can't see, but he can. Amen. Amen. You know, I love, I love the analogy of, uh, of, of the whole warehouse concept uh, that our, our, children's, our children's minds are like warehouses with empty shelves. And either the world is going to beat us there and stock them uh, with its goods, or we're going to beat the world there. And whoever, you know, whoever first stocks their goods there is going to make it all the more difficult for the next person to unstock Boy, and restock. That's such a good point. So it's important to give our kids the truth and, uh, and, to, hit, and to hit them with, uh, with the gospel. All right, Ray, you had a little run-in with uh, Mr. Schwarzenegger, Yeah, a you? little run-in, me and Ani, my buddies. <laughs> uh, this is a number of years ago when I was open air preaching with a team at uh, Santa Monica uh, one Friday night. Uh, just after I finished preaching, Arnold walked by with his wife, Maria Shriver. Boom, boom, mm. boom. That's boom. what I heard. Boom, boom, boom. boom. <laughs> so anyway, I, I, I looked at them, walked past me, and I thought to myself, wise men follow stars. Right. So I followed them. <laughs> and I noticed they went into the Gap clothing store. And so I went around the back door of the Gap, or the side door, went in there, and there I was standing in the Gap for Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> when he approached me. Well, I kind of approached him. Right. I got my track ready, and I got starstruck. I didn't go up to him and say, hi, Arnold, I love your movies, blah, blah, blah. I just walked up to him and said, you get one? And he said, no! <laughs> oh. And I went, <laughs> You know, this is the Terminator. Uh, <laughs> was, it like that? Like, was he that forceful? It was forceful. Anyway, I had a conversation with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That was it. Uh, <laughs> we talked to each other. He said no to me, and I said, do you want one of these? Uh, anyway, uh, God was in control. Maria Shriver went down the bottom, the second floor of the basement of the Gap, and, and she bumped into a member of our team who was only, I think, 11, was he? Or 10? Uh, I think he was 8. Yeah, 8? Yeah. yeah, he was wow. 8. Little Jordan. Yeah, he changed Jordan it, Drake. Change every year. Jordan Drake. He's an adult now. He's in college. And he had a brilliant <laughs> memory, and each week he would uh, go through the spiel about Jesus and who he was, kind of like uh, what the, the, the shaft thing. And so he went, <laughs> you just touched <laughs> my knee Sorry, ah! while I was speaking. I'm starstruck. <laughs> yeah, I was I'm wearing shorts. Anyway, uh, he shared this with her, and she was very impressed. And Arnold came back, and she says, listen to this, honey, or some, something like that. And he sat down and listened to uh, Jordan share that whole spiel again. Wow. And if you want to see, those of you who got the Evidence Bible, it's on page 817. We've got Jordan Drake's spiel on who Jesus was. It's very, very long, but he had memorized the whole thing. He used to get on the box and do it. And he gave it to Maria, right. brings the gospel out, and he gave it to Arnold. And uh, it was a wonderful thing, and, and I hope he... Hope he comes back. Yeah. Oh, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. Yeah. You know, uh, that was awesome. Little Jordan uh, was such an inspiration, and and you know this really ties in with what we're talking about in terms of bringing your children up in the ways of the Lord. But this wasn't something that was forced. It wasn't something that his dad told him you got it. He wanted to do it, and yeah. he would get up on the box and do it to the audiences. But but how neat is that? That you know the Lord intervened and still brought the gospel well, to Well, he knew Arnold's that I was going to blow it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I wonder if you were a buffer, if he would have paid attention to you, right? Yeah, he, he, uh, I think it was a jealousy thing. He's just caring about That's too, what it was. too much bulk. That's right. what it is. Heavy. Right. I've heard him talk about it on interviews, just his jealousy of your <laughs> physique. <laughs>
but but that's encouraging. Pray for uh, Arnold. Pray for Hollywood. Uh, that the Lord would divinely intervene and bring well, the I gospel. I've got to say something about celebrities. I, I often think, why doesn't God save celebrities? And it's because he's not impressed with them at all. Oh, mm. amen. You know, that which is highly esteemed in the sight of man is an abomination in the sight of God. Right. Often these celebrities that we esteem and these, uh, these wonderful athletes are front in society because they're ambitious. They stomp on their friends to become first. And yeah. that which we esteem is an abomination in God's eyes. So he's no respecter of persons. But the whole thought with us is if Arnold got saved and testified on television, people would listen right. because of who he is. But our ways aren't God's ways and God's ways aren't our ways. Amen. So as I've said before and, and, and recapping some of the evangelism principles I teach, the W is witness willingly to whosoever. Uh, God isn't a respecter of men, and neither should we be. So preach the gospel and, and watch the Lord work. And the power of celebrity, I remember um, the, we used to get about 10 people in our team show up at the prayer meeting before we go to Santa Monica. After the encounter with Arnold, we had over 30 people show up for the prayer meeting. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> that helped a bit. That's the it? power of celebrity. That's great. Well, we only have time for one question today. Mark, I want you to please hit this as quick as you can. Uh, what do you say if someone says, I'm too horrible a sinner, God would never forgive me? So we got about 30 seconds, Mark. Uh, well, it's a bit of an oxymoron, isn't it? it it's kind of like the biggest man in the universe coming to us and saying, hey, I'm too big to go on a diet. <laughs> hey, listen, now diets were designed for big people, and Jesus came to seek and save that which is lost. His forgiveness is designed for the most wretched of sinners. He didn't come to um, reach out to those who didn't need help, but to those who, I mean, who didn't need help, but those who actually did need help. So Jesus Christ is the answer to man's sinful dilemma. Christianity is the only worldview that steps out on a limb and deal with that one thing that we can't deal with ourselves. Ourselves, and that is sin. God reaches into the dark cavern of our hearts and does the one thing for us that we cannot do ourselves, and that is get us right with God. Amen. I wish I had another 10 minutes on that. Oh, I know. Man. I know. You can never talk enough on that. I think of the psalm that says, if you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who can stand, but there is forgiveness with you. And you all know my testimony and the wretch that I was and the wretch that, uh, you know, Paul the Apostle was yeah. in killing Christians, but look at what the Lord did. And yeah. so you're, you, no matter who you are, you're not beyond the reach of God's grace. But first, you've got to be broken and recognize the seriousness of your sin in his sight. Amen. So, it's been a wonderful program. Great having you all with us. Please remember to go to our blog at uh, onthebox.us. Check out the notes and everything there. And remember, um, tomorrow we are going to talk about <laughs> taking a relative out for lunch. <laughs> this weekend, I witnessed to them. And we're not going to talk about that. That's the challenge of the day. Go do it. God bless you. See you on Monday. That was good. Uh, for questions about On the Box with Ray Comfort or to submit questions for future shows, please email on the box at livingwaters.com. That's on the box at livingwaters.com. On the Box with Ray Comfort is an outreach of Living Waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll free 1 800 437 1893. Now go and preach the gospel.